hello from the middle of my eating disorder flare up. Maybe this is familiar to you. I live mostly symptom free. I've been in recovery for about five years, but sometimes it just rears its ugly head and it comes along and it kicks my butt. And this week, that's exactly what's been happening. So what I'm focused on is just trying to get through from day to day, feeling relatively comfortable with myself. If your eating disorder is kicking your ass, then I'm sorry, I know what it feels like. It's not very nice. And hopefully some of these skills can help you. So without further ado, tip number one, wear comfy clothes. <laughs> and by comfy, I don't mean like pajamas. I mean, clothes that you feel comfortable enough in that you're not thinking about them all the time. You're not adjusting them. So I've been wearing a lot of dungarees, overalls, onesies, boiler suits this week, just things that I can throw on and not have to think about it. Now is also not the time when I'm gonna go back into my wardrobe, try new things on, try on things I haven't worn for a while. I'm just gonna stick with what I know, stick with the basics, not put myself out of my comfort zone until I'm feeling a bit stronger, a bit more robust. And I'm not gonna go shopping either because that's a major trigger for me. No shopping, out of the question, no. Okay, number two, keep eating. This one is really hard because all of my impulses are screaming like, restrict, restrict. Whatever's going on in your body or in your mind, you still need to eat. So that's what I'm focused on at the moment. I'm making sure I've got enough food in the house and I'm trying to avoid my triggers and I know what they are. It's stuff like if it gets to 2.30 p.m. and I haven't had lunch yet and I'm really hungry and there's nothing available quickly in the fridge, that's a massive trigger for me. Number three, I try and remember that it's not my body that's the problem, it's the way I think about my body that's the problem. My body is not to anything. My body is exactly the way it is supposed to be right now in this moment. When I'm having negative thoughts about my body, it's the thoughts that are the problem. They lie to me. They tell me stuff that's not true. They tell me I'm not lovable. I know that's not true. There are people who love me. They tell me I'm not sexy. That's not true. There are people who, fi who find me sexy. So it's hard, but every time you have one of those thoughts, challenge it, don't let it go unchecked. If it's wrong, if the voice in your head is saying something that's wrong, tell it it's wrong. Kick its butt back. Show it who's boss. Number four. Number four is celebrate bodies. And if I'm not in a position where I feel able to celebrate my own body or tolerate my own body or look at or think about my own body, I still surround myself by other people celebrating their diverse bodies. My Instagram newsfeed is a haven and it's full of all different shapes, size, colored bodies, all differently abled bodies being celebrated. And I find it very uplifting. I would highly recommend giving that a try. I'm gonna put some great accounts in the, whatever you call it. This is my first attempt at a YouTube video in quite a long time. The video description? I don't know. Clearly not a YouTuber. Number five, boring self-care. Not the fun, not the glamorous self-care. Boring self-care is a term that was coined by Hannah Daisy. She's an illustrator to describe the unglamorous self-care that we all have to do just to like keep plodding on. It's not the, the fun sexy stuff like the face masks and the baths, it's the really mundane boring stuff like turning your phone off an hour before you go to bed, making sure you get eight hours of good quality sleep, which can be difficult to do when you share your bed with a bony whippet. I'm working from home at the moment, so for me a big one is getting out of the house in the morning um, before I start work so that if I don't manage to leave again until the evening or even at all at least I know that I've been out I've got some fresh air I've moved my body number six and this one is difficult is moving your body in a non-toxic way it's not easy or well, it's not easy for me um, because every every fiber of my being when I'm in my eating disorder is going exercise exercise a lot so trying to avoid those things, but still 
move my body, still get some exercise, still get some endorphins, still get the sort of happy stuff happening in your brain. Also, if you've got a dog, walking your dog, like what's better than that for your mental health? Nothing. Oh, except cuddling your dog. Yeah. So, those are the things I've been doing. Maybe they'll help you, maybe they won't. Maybe you can help me if you've got anything that you think I could be doing. I don't really want to be feeling like this right now. <laughs> for more content like this and for Jess the Dog content, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget you can find us both over on social media.